How much do you know about Saudi Arabia? Here's a fun fact. Saudi Arabia is actually bigger than Mexico. And yet, 85% of the whole population lives in these two regions. This is like 20% of the total area. Hope you're hooked, because it only gets more interesting. So, Saudi Arabia is located in the furthermost part of southwestern Asia, on this piece of land between Africa and Eurasia, which is called the Arabian Peninsula. You will find the country fast because it is the biggest one out there. In fact, Saudi Arabia is actually the 13th largest country in the world if we talk about the area. It's about the same size as Greenland. Wait, what? They don't look similar in size at all. Well, remember that the map is a projection of the globe. The scale of projections on different latitudes isn't the same. Closer to the equator, they are smaller. Closer to the north, the scale gets larger. So the flat map is quite distorted, so you shouldn't trust your eyes too much. Let's look at the globe and find these countries. Here is Greenland. And this is Saudi Arabia. Now they almost look the same. The Arabian Peninsula is a desert region, so most of that area is real desert. And since Saudi Arabia takes most of the peninsula, it has a lot of deserts too. 95% of the country's territory is a desert or semi-desert. Rub al Khali, the largest continuous sand desert in the world, is located in the country. By continuous, I mean there is nothing but eternal sands there, and it is truly huge. It's bigger than the Netherlands, Belgium, and France combined and sand dunes can reach the height of a 60-story building. Yet, it's really hot and humid out there, and there are no natural water sources. There are, of course, seas around the country, but it's seawater, so Saudi Arabia has to desalinate the water from the sea before it can be consumed. The country gets tons of water from abroad, but a gallon of water is still more costly there than a gallon of oil. So if you ever take a trip, stock up on the liquid of life. You will never guess what else the country imports from abroad. Sand! Yes, being a desert and having sand in abundance, Saudi Arabia still has to buy sand from Australia for construction and glass production. Turns out, desert sand is unstable and not suitable for that kind of business. At the same time, the country has something valuable oil. At first, Saudi Arabia was a poor desert state. Then, in 1938, oil was discovered, and everything changed. Today, it has more oil than any other country and is the largest oil and fuel exporter in the world. Yet, you can imagine that harsh weather and climate conditions made people choose places for their settlements wisely. The reason why most of the population lives in a small area is because everything else is a big hot desert with no water. Here are the country's seven biggest cities. Dammam is located right here on the shore of the Persian Gulf. This city has the largest airport in the world. The King Fahd Airport. It's five times bigger than the world's second largest airport. Let's move to the west. Riyadh is the capital and also the most populated city. The word Riyadh means the garden. This probably reflects how the city was back in the day, an oasis in the middle of the desert. Now it's a huge megapolis with skyscrapers and it has grown this big and tall in less than a century. Now let's move southwest and travel along the other densely populated area. The road from Riyadh to Abba is right west of Rub al Khali, the empty quarter. That largest continuous desert I told you about. That area isn't inhabited and isn't even fully explored. Yet beneath its sands, there are big reserves of petroleum. So maybe at some point, even the desert won't be a mystery anymore. Now we reach Abba. This name means perfume, and it's a true oasis in the desert. It's green, 
there are many flowers and landscapes that are breathtaking. It's the city of arts, cultures, and coffee. The city hosts an annual summer festival and is known for its unique cuisine and traditional folk arts. Dancing, painting, pottery, and wood carving. If Riyadh is all about business, Abba stands for culture. Now let's move north along the Red Sea shore. We'll see three cities one next to another. Taif, Mecca, and Jeddah. Jeddah is the second most populated city in the country, and soon it will make history. Right now, the Jeddah Tower is under construction there. This tower is planned to be 3,281 feet tall. This will make the tower the largest building in the world, surpassing the Burj Khalifa. The construction started in 2013 and then was put on hold for five years. In 2023, the construction was resumed. Jeddah also has the tallest fountain in the world, the King Fahd's Fountain. It shoots water as high as a 20-story building. Remember that the country has problems with fresh water? So, of course, they don't use that precious liquid. Instead, the fountain gets the water from the Red Sea, which means that the water in it is salt water. Mecca is the holiest city in the country. It's home to the world's largest mosque and many other sacred places. During religious holidays, the number of people in the city more than doubles. The road from Mecca to our next destination, Taif, is captivating by itself. It goes through mountain ranges and deep valleys, fruit markets, and rose farms. Taif is a mountainous city, usually covered in clouds. They give the city a much desired shade and some coolness. So you can imagine that it's a very popular tourist destination, especially in the summer, because it's one of the few places in the country with tolerable weather. Taif is unofficially called the summer capital of Saudi Arabia. It is also called the City of Roses. About 300 million roses are grown in the city every year. Once harvested, they're used to produce the world's most expensive rose oil. We have a few more big cities on the list, and we keep going north. The next stop is Medina. It's another sacred city with a rich history and it's home to the largest mosque in the world. Not every visitor will get to see the city center because non-Muslims aren't allowed there. The outskirts are good too. Medina is the center of agriculture and is mostly known for its date palm trees. They have about 300 varieties of those. Let's grab a few and move northwest to the last city of our tour, Tabuk. It's an ancient city dating back thousands of years. That's why you can find ancient petroglyphs in various places. But it's not the only thing the city has to offer. Actually, Tabuk has it all. Ancient landmarks, gorgeous rocky landscapes, beautiful beaches by the Red Sea, many festivals with diverse cuisine and traditional Saudi Arabian music. Even better, the region is fertile and it's great for cultivating crops. In Tabuk, they grow citrus fruits, dates, and olives. Just a few words about the landmarks. There is UNESCO's World Heritage Site of the Nabataean Ruins. And the Tabuk Castle is one of the oldest castles in the world. You can also check out the Hazma Desert. It's a museum of rare rock formations that appeared naturally over centuries. I don't know about you, but visiting Saudi Arabia is on my wish list now. What countries would you like to visit? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The tour is over, but I have a few more facts for you. The national animal of Saudi Arabia is the camel. Turns out camels are native to the Arabian Peninsula and there's evidence that camels and people lived side by side for centuries. People in Saudi Arabia love and respect their camels. And on smaller roads, they're used as a form of transportation. 
There are even beauty contests for camels, and enthusiasts say that a beautiful camel stands out right away. And now, that's a wrap on Saudi Arabia. See ya! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.